this change will come and will be sustained for many years by blue blood southern Cameroonians. And if you show me a Sotman, I will tell you that's a blue blood southern Cameroonian. If you show me a Baliman, I will tell you all the villages, I know them. So we are here, we have the opportunity to hear what is happening in our, own, in our country that was taken away from us um, more than 55 years ago. And we are lucky to have in our midst uh, guests who can talk about this. Uh, we are here, we are not saying that you should take a particular political aspiration, but we are saying that as a decent human being, when there is injustice, you should sit up. That's why we beg your indulgence, crave your indulgence, that please, let's give our uh, brothers who have come to talk to us who come, uh, in this segment of our uh, gathering tonight. And I want to thank the princess uh, for welcoming us wonderfully and for giving us this opportunity to have what is going to happen right now happen. Because uh, it's by hospitality that we're going to have the opportunity to, to hear our barrister. Uh, Bob can here talk to us and to also hear um, our homegrown leader here, uh, the uh, Civil uh, Society Consulting Committee, Civil Society Consulting Committee, so that to talk to us. And we are Mr. Ambez also. So, Barista Gamot, thank you so much for all you do and are still doing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the Maybe I should let. Uh... Your president will speak first. Go that step. Okay. Um, uh, I. What are you coming to? We have come to visit the Bui family group today, not to remind you or to inform you, but to talk to you about what is happening in our beloved country, the Southern Cameroons, and what we as a people can do about it. We are visiting with you today, like other uh, cultural groups here in Minnesota, we are visiting, we've been to the agricultural group, we've been to Manu, uh, we went to Bali. After we leave from here, we're going to go to Meta. And we have decided to visit these cultural groups to meet you people individually and find out what we can do collectively to address what is happening in our country. Uh, homes are still being raided, when parents are sleeping with their children, young people, mostly young men, are being raised to year only, and some of them are dying. The unfortunate thing is that we can't see it. So in that sense, like the big is winning. And because we can't see it, we are not responding. So we are coming to Bui family group today because we know that you guys have members in this community and you are in your numbers. Uh, where Bobga sitting here has been traveling the country, talking to various groups. We had a night with him yesterday in Minnesota, but I think there are about 12 of us in the hall yesterday. Yes, he was with us. But look at us in this hall. We are sitting here comfortably enjoying this country, building all the wealth that we are building because somebody made it happen for us. We are enjoying this comfort in this country because some people marched. Some people said they had had enough. They were not going to take it anymore. That is why we can sit in this country today, talk about our rights as citizens in this country. <clears throat> while the people that we left home are struggling for those same rights. So I am coming to the Bui family group because I know who you are. I went to school with you people. I know what you can do. To ask you to come on board and support this job. So I'm going to let Maya uh, Bobga Tell us a little bit, probably, how they started. We don't have all night, but at least he has something to tell us. Thank you. Yeah. you uh, 
Rogers is trying to be apologetic. Let me reassure you that the soft people are in the front line in this world. And it dates back to the history of this struggle from the time of uh, our late friend Miglo. And I think he gave the leadership that he still inspires from his tone to this moment. And I'm really thankful to him that um, he gave me the opportunity to come and meet the people. I think it's about uh, 40 years, no not 40 years, it's about um, 20 something years that I've not seen my daughter here. The father is my classmate. People thought I was from so and they thought he was from bad. And uh, I've gone to the Sok Palace. You know what is happening with the Sok Water Project. It is a manifestation of how the evil government of the Republic of Cameroon is using the Dio, who is a Francophone, using the gendarme, who, the gendarmes who are francophones, using B who are francophones, I mean all the administrators, and then the black legs they can harvest from amongst us to fight the sub kingdom. Gaddafi was not a foolish man. In the whole of Cameroon, he singled out the phone of Zop and inv invited him a couple of times to leave him. And he was planning to build a university in Zop land as a way of grooming people by developing their minds to be able to stand up as an African people. In fact, by that token, Nso was going to be the nursery for the liberation of Southern Cameroon. Even your cousins in Fumban, it's on record that they wrote to the Queen of England, please come and get into partnership with us. We don't like the Germans. But the English people in their intelligence that translates very easily when it comes to making important choices into stupidity, they did not come. All of you cousins, the, 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 the Fumbanis, the Nsok people, the Okus, and the Nonis, they would have been under English, not English colonization, but English partnership for human development. This is to tell you that whether you are a political, you call it an apolitical or non whatever, let me tell you the Sok man, by the protection of the Sok kingdom, does not allow any foreign pebble to spoil the jollof rice of the palace. What I can share with you here is that the Sok people are a primary victim of our rising up as one person to fight. You know the young man who was shot and was buried in Yaki. You know that they threatened the fund that they were going to arrest him. And the Sok people said, come, come and take him. Joe Weaver, with whom I worked closely to put John Frundi where he prostituted himself and became a salaried person under Paul Bia. He has never looked back and said, who helped me to be here? Joe Weaver lost his job. He had to smartly go on voluntary retirement and went into business of motor spare parts before bouncing back to politics. But it is not Shundi who put him in parliament. It is some people. The thing you have to understand is that 
our struggle had virtually become buried when successive leaders came up and very quickly adopted personal agenda. When we turned around in 2015, we discovered that in the area of legislature, we were no longer represented. Because when once you are elected a parliamentarian, you are told that you no longer represent the constituency from which you were elected. You now become, you permit me to put it in French, un député de la nation. That is, you are a representative of the entire nation. That is the principle on which people in parliament work. So the first person to break away from the application of that principle was Joe Weaver. And it is only after he left that Namukong from Bafut took on. And as I put it, when we saw that in the legislature, in the judiciary, we only had little remnants. We decided to convert those remnants into stem cells to regenerate the spirit of independence in Southern Cameroon. And we suggested that we should have a conference to discuss the security of common law, which was our cherished judicial value in Cameroon. Because when you are trapped by an animal, you don't frighten the animal to kill you. You cajole it and you have an exit. So we talked of common law within Cameroon. And when we asked government through our resolutions that we want them to stop eroding the common law and to roll back all those that had been eroded, but that for it to be sustainable, even if you told us that we're giving you all your magistrates are going to be anglophones, everything will be the way you have asked. We insisted that there must be a return to the federal experiment that took place in Fumban. And that, that experiment in Fumban was never conclusive. It was suspended. So let us go back there and see if we can fix things and anchor the return of the common law on a federal structure so that we'll be comfortable that the federal I mean the common law will never be taken away from the southern Cameroon territory. And of course they knew that when we go to Fumban they will have nothing to offer that will convince us to stay in the Union. In fact I proceeded in July before coming on vacation here after consulting some well-meaning people, I went to South Palace, I went to Bafu Palace, and I put in a petition in the Constitutional Council that the government of the Republic of Cameroon, represented by Paul Bia, the President of Senate, President of National Assembly, Prime Minister, Minister of Justice, Minister of Territorial Administration, and the Governor of Northwest and Governor of Southwest, they should come and answer to the people of Southern Cameroon whether or not there has ever been an act of union between Southern Cameroon and the Republic of Cameroon because I know there is none that exists. That action till this moment has not received the minimum of reaction by enrolling it for hearing. So by inference, we don't expect any local remedies to come out of that. And we can now proceed to the international fora, like the African Commission for Human and People's Rights, for an external jurisdiction to have a determination of the question that the Constitutional Council in Cameroon has refused to answer. But look at what happened. All these resolutions and declarations and communiques that we sent were snubbed. We now decided to make our strike indefinite and go to the street peacefully. And when we went peacefully, we had a march on the 8th of November 
round the town, we left the Court of Appeal upstation, came down, went through Commercial Avenue, through Hospital Roundabout and Supermarket, back to Liberty Square. And at Liberty Square, we made a speech. I made a speech there. And thanked even the police that they had followed us and nobody was hurt. The moment I finished my speech, they threw tear gas, if, I mean, on two people. One fell between the legs of a young lady who was pregnant and she was asthmatic, a young lawyer. And the other one fell on another young lawyer. We took them to hospital. And the, the, the population got angry that our lawyers are so peaceful. We wanted to join them. They refused. What is your reason for attacking them? That's where problems started. They went now to Boya for, this, for the same activity. They entered the hotel rooms before time, broke into the hotel rooms, beat up lawyers and took their wigs and gowns. Broke into some of their offices in Boya. Pierced their tires with their military knives. As if that was not enough. When the students in the University of Boya started reacting because teachers too were agitating on the destruction of the Anglo-Saxon education subsystem. These students said, look, this is an Anglo-Saxon university. You are flooding the place with Francophone teachers. They come and they want to teach us in French. And these were the arguments we put forward before the Anglo-Saxon university was created. So where do you want us to go to? They sent soldiers who raped your sisters and your daughters. In fact, my daughter was trashed because she raised an alarm when she saw that some soldier, had, I mean some bee had entered the room of a student in their municipality, their student hostel, and the student was crying. So when she raised an alarm and the other students came out, these people got out, you know, gang rape, you know that? They threatened her that would teach you a lesson. As soon as she told me I was in Kumba for a meeting, I went and whisked her and took her to Nigeria. Because I knew what could happen. You saw the pictures how they would take a young girl, well-dressed, pull her out of her room, and sewage that was flowing out, they would go and put you to roll there and kiss the sewage. When we saw all those things, we could no longer stop people that do not join us in the strike. So there was an unusual groundswell support and involvement of the entire population in Southern Cameroon. And the response from the diaspora was also unprecedented. I've been coming to this country since 1993 on vacation, every year. But I was pleasantly surprised that from North America, right to Japan. People were speaking one language in support of what we were doing. When they started arresting us, I knew that these people are unrepentant on the evil they have perpetrated on our people for more than 55 years. And I knew for certain that our lives were at risk. In fact, in January, a warrant of arrest had been issued on me. And, no, that was in uh, December. They issued a warrant of arrest on me. Then they cancelled it and invited us to dialogue. When we went to the dialogue, we realized that all they wanted to do was to manage us to do the usual thing, bribe us with money, and then they will fizzle out with this time. We said no. We raised a preliminary objection and walked out with the lawyers. And they separated us from the teachers with whom we were working, kept the teachers in Bamenda, locked them up in the conference room in the governor's office, and they would not allow them go out. They would not allow them use their phones. So the population in Bamenda swam into the governor's office, and that's how they opened up. We had also left the meeting. That was 27th and 28th of December. So, with all these things happening, our 
chasing the occupier of our territory out by the resistance that we are putting up, we will have to rebuild the civic institution in that territory. And the only way we can effectively build it is by going back to our palaces. Because those are governance institutions that existed before the white man came. There is no son of so or daughter of so who respects the palace less than the white man's law. And we have the discernment that where some practices do not actually portray us as civilized people, we have a smart way of dropping it. People talk about women's rights. I lived in Funchal Street. You all know the power of Kongazim. The insult women. And that has not made them to be stubborn to their husbands. They have instead preserved the values of the insult woman. And I think the palace has reciprocated appropriately. Because the year that elders like Ma were born, they didn't have the number of years that we have today. When you achieve, you are recognized, you are knighted as a woman, just as men were being knighted. So I want to thank you and say that we have a lot that we have been talking about on YouTube and we encourage you to go there because these things have been recorded and preserved. Go to YouTube when you have a little time. Watch what is there. But remember the organic platform for reconstitution of our society lies in our fundums. I'm not talking of the little, little chiefs who can easily be given, in fact, they have increased their salary, was it from 18,000 to 50,000 francs? Mm -hmm. These are not the people that we are talking about. We are talking about proud kingdoms that receive genuine material and spiritual support from their people, whose pride as a people is connected to their fundamental. As a Bali man, I can tell you that when I talk to gendarmes and so I say, don't mess around with me. I'm a general from the war academy called Leila. Just like you cannot mess around with the soft boys. We hold Bamenda like this. And as our brother here spoke, it is important. If we cannot do it at the general level, connect through the sub community here, connect the sub community in North America with the sub community down at home and give a little support. And to do that effectively, let us find out the resources that we have. I have an in-law from Bali. Each time he has his leave, he works in Isle of Man in, in, uh, in England. Each time he has his leave, he spends four weeks doing pro bono work at BBH. If I ask you now, how many so children are accomplished medical doctors in North America? You cannot give me the figure, can you? No. How many pharmacists? These people, if they, you do the statistics and they come together, they have a lot of friends. If they decide that we are donating a hundred hours each to serve our community, they will reduce malaria, they will reduce HIV, they will do a lot of things. The engineers amongst you, while you know Frundi is manipulating the mayor because all of them are working with La Republic against the Fondum so until they are able to threaten that they will arrest the Fondum so If the so community here says, can you keep quiet? Because what's the argument of Fondum so 
Why are you talking about something that is, that's not their own if you are not a thief? Professor Fonlon had that water supply as a gift from his personal friend, the former Prime Minister of uh, Canada, Trudeau. And now we are educated. We can contribute money and run that place, let's so people have clean water as an honor to Professor Fonlon. So, can you do your own thing? Why is the mayor not bothered about the places that have, don't have water supply in so He's bothered about controlling what they want to inherit without paying a price and to hand it to snake. So, there are lots of things that we're going to work on. I am virtually uh, here on exile, but my bags are packed that as soon as I know I will not go and lose my head. I'm back in the territory. And it is important for us to understand that there's a huge debate out there in your groups. You were just showing us a new president for your group. Begin to identify the people with leadership qualities. Because the Southern Cameroon is one of the most richly educated groups in Sub-Saharan Africa. Just look around you in your own group. There's nobody who came here with a class 7 certificate and has remained there. We are growing every day by the bounds. We should be able, because whether you like it or not, even if they, 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 they change your complexion, you will never be an indigenous uh, American or a Caucasian emigre here. You have to go back home. And if it, even if you earn your pension, your pension will have more value in Scotland than here. So let us think rightly and the revolution is not politics. It is a movement for change, for the better for our people. So I thank you very much. And I know that there is a confluence of objective in this change that we are promoting and the agenda that you have as Nsok people. So let us consolidate this partnership and not allow hawks to take the leadership of our process of change for their personal benefits. Because as we sit here, a lot of people will come up who will simply want to pretend and take, like most of our leaders of yesteryears, to us and sold out. We are no longer going to be traded. Today we have lawyers who know their left from their right, more than funchas who had only teachers. Pa Bamboye of blessed memory, he told me, because I have been connecting with the elders, that he is the one who wrote the speech that Foncha had to read in Fuma. But Foncha took it and tore it. Because he said his father came from Chang. So he had double loyalties. And on that account, this change will come and will be sustained for many years by blue blood Southern Cameroonians. And if you show me a Sotman, I will tell you that's a blue blood Southern Cameroonian. If you show me a Baliman, I will tell you all the villages, I know them. I've had them as clients. So I can tell you. I tell my younger brothers whose wives are from Western province. I tell them, I say, when I'm going to war, I first liquidate any disloyalty in the house. So be careful. <laughs> Your loyalty has to be unalloyed. <laughs> if you consider yourself as married to my brother, don't stand in the path of change that I am pursuing. Thank you very much. If somebody had any question, it is late. You can give your questions to him. He will send it to me by email and I will respond because I am here to conscientize, to mobilize and sensitize our people towards a sustainable change for our independent statehood. The question of federalism does not come into our discussion because when you capture 
when you elope with a woman and have children with her, and when the children are grown, you go and do a marriage certificate, it does not retrospectively validate the illegal relationship you had with her until you go and perform certain traditions. But this time around, there's no room even for performance of those traditions. Those children will be taken back home and the man can go away. Thank you very much. <laughs>